Drake, you gonna be in my video? Come here. No, come here. Come here. Good thing somebody having a head head popping up behind you occasionally. Well, yes. <laughs> <laughs> okay, fine. Get off of here. Okay. Fine. <laughs> Anything. She is. She's she's like, no, I'm not trying anything. She's playing with Copics in in the studio behind me. And now you have the crayons. Mm -hmm. They're fun. Mm -hmm. The watercolor crayons. So she's hanging out with me. And we're making a video. Drake is hanging out too. And I have more light. Because I bought a floor lamp and I put a light up. I haven't made a video in like three weeks. And that's because I got sick and I really couldn't do anything. And then my mom went into the hospital, which was really like freaked the shit out of me. So I had that and then I kind of had to relax so I didn't like have a flare up because I was in the hospital room for like 10 hours and in the ER for hours. Um, so then I wasn't feeling good and I'm still not at 100% at all. Um, so <laughs> this video is gonna be uh, not really concise. I posted on my blog, on Saturday, uh, the end of my journal. There are still some pages that aren't finished yet in here, um, but since I kind of like to work on stuff, like work on a page and then while it's drying, I want to work on another page, I just figure I'll finish this these pages while I'm letting other things dry. <laughs> so I'm gonna make you laugh the whole time. It's so funny to sit and film because like when I'm by myself, it's just like I'm talking to myself, but now there's somebody else like listening to me talk to myself, but I'm really talking to you, so it's just all kinds of fun. Um, but it's interesting to look through a journal and just see how your style has changed and, and how things have uh, changed along the way while you're working in it. I started using a lot more magazine images and embraced white space. And I started using a lot of photographs. I have a layout of Sherlock's flat from BBC Sherlock in here. Yep. I did. I drew it because a friend needed to know the layout, so I drew it for her, Beth. I made a new journal and I really like the Smashbooks, but I have a binding machine so I was like, how can I figure out how to make one for myself? And what I really like is that it's a hardcover book, it looks like a hardcover book, but when you open it, it's spiral bound and I've really kind of fallen in love with spiral bound, simple spiral bound journals because I don't want to spend so much time on a journal, I don't want it to be really heavy because I want to be able to carry it everywhere with me. So this is the new one I made and this is, it's actually a spiral, but look, on the inside, it looks like a book. So this is the one that I just made, and it has nothing in it yet. Because uh, I just finished it, like, I don't know, like a half hour ago, right? So, new journal. I haven't told you, YouTube viewers, about uh, journaling deep. And that's because sometimes I feel like I, I like to do videos to introduce new projects that I'm doing, but um, people don't like that, apparently. I don't know. I'm, I'm not a huge fan of the thumbs up or the thumbs down system on YouTube. I mean, I like the thumbs up part, but I don't like the, th like, if you thumbs down, I want to know why. Um, but then I don't want to know why, because then I'll get, I hate your video because of this. Why do you hate my video? But anyway, that's how it goes. Um, I read everyone's comments though, so. Journaling Deep is this uh, thing, this project I start and every week you get, it's like three to five page PDF um, that goes over a technique, a material, or an idea showing you how you can pull out material for your journal from your daily life and how you can go without using prompts. It also really helps you to look at materials in a new way, to look at your journal in a new way, and I'm really having a ton of fun with it. And every week I get to put together this PDF, and it's, it's basically an email, so it's like a mailing list, you sign up for it, you pay $10 a month, and every Thursday night you get an email from me, and it's just gonna have stuff. And I'm, like I said, I'm having a blast with it, and because I just, I like the idea of it because, you know, it's really, it's not, it's like two drinks from Starbucks a month. It's going to be going for an entire year and so it's like if you can't afford a class you can come and do this and the nice thing with the way that it's set up is that you can join it let's say you don't like it you don't have to you could just have it for a month and then you can leave or if you really do like it but you can't afford it for a month you can leave and then come back i'll be putting up um each lesson pdf as a separate like 
independent download that you can get so you can actually go through and pick and choose if you don't want to be on the mailing list. But it is really a lot of fun. We have a Flickr group. I get feedback from people because you can just reply right to the message and say like this really worked for me or this didn't. There's questions for reflection at the end so I'm really trying to get you to think about what you're using in your journal, how, why, all that kind of stuff. So it is really a lot of fun and what's really awesome about it is that I love doing it and I'm devoting my time to it. And you're like each individual person is paying $10 a month, which is fantastic. And when the numbers get to a certain point, it gets to be where I can focus all of my time on making videos for you guys and making that PDF because I have, instead of just doing a workshop and hoping that people keep signing up for it, I have a stable income that can pay for, you know, medical bills and, and, and stuff like that so that I don't have to fret and divide my attention so much so I can make I can like make a constant stream of videos, I can constantly be doing with this list and I can work on the blog and it really is amazing and, and, and a life changing thing. So head on over to the blog, I have the link down below and check it out and see there's a sample lesson if you don't know if you want to do it or not. So that's up to you. Awesome. Uh, what was the other thing I was going to talk about? Oh, brain work. Okay. I should like have a list and prepare myself for stuff like that. But you know, unfortunately, that's not how my brain works. I just kind of ramble at the camera and then edit it together to look semi coherent. <laughs> Yay! I remembered. Okay. It's because it's really exciting news. And if you follow me on Twitter or on Facebook, you've already seen but starting in January, I'll be teaching an art journaling series of classes and workshops in Chandler, Arizona at um, Craft Fusion. And I'll have a link below to there. Uh, so you can just kind of see where the story is and see if it's doable for you to get there. The first class is on January 18th from 6.30 to 8.30 p.m. And the first class is going to be all about doing, like, figuring out how to do backgrounds. And it's it, it's really friendly to people who are new to art journaling, and it's also friendly to people who are more advanced. Today's video is Beth, the aforementioned Beth, who has been so awesome to me lately. She was like, I just got some gel sticks because you were talking about them in your video, and I want to know some more stuff that you can do with them. So if you look at the last video that I uploaded, I showed you how to use them through Punchella, and today I'm going to show you how to use them for watercolor effects, how to blend them, how to turn them into a spray that you can use with stencils. So let's go play with these, and then we'll be done, <laughs> I guess. Okay. We're going to go play. These are the gel sticks, and fun colors. You can draw people with them because they have all the colors. Uh, and then when they come out, they look like that. It's kind of weird, but they're a lot of fun to draw with and they are really, really smooth. So you can do a background on a page. But, oh, hi, Drake. It's like chapstick. It does look like chapstick, doesn't it? I was like, that would be interesting. But they're really, really smooth when you draw and they're really fun to draw with. Is it a fish? I see a fish. <laughs> I don't know what I see. I'm just messing around. So you can kind of mix them, you know, to make purple. Like so. And then you just grab a brush, a little fine one. Which is funny because this is a big huge thing of brushes and yet I can't find the one I want. Ooh. Isn't that cool? That's really cool. They are so much fun and depending on how much water you put on them, you can really pull out the colors. Now I'm using printmaking paper and these these will work since they're you know basically a, a type of watercolor you want some kind of paper that would be really good with watercolors um, but you can also use whatever you have obviously you don't need to go buy anything special so I really do love drawing over painted stuff with them why do I keep picking up the same color in some white and some 
peach. And you can use the water or you can even like use your finger almost. It's really cool. Depending on how far you want it to spread. So they are, I mean, they're great for building kind of like a background for whatever you're doing. And since they kind of turn into watercolors, you don't have to worry about if your pen will work over them, as you do with something like uh, the portfolio oil pastels, the water soluble ones. Blend that in there. There are a couple other things that you can do with them. Another cool thing you can do with these is use them with stamps. So here I have one of my stamps, my mashed potato stamp. And I'm actually gonna do it in red. For some reason, I'm all about the red today. So you color on your stamp, like so. Make sure it'll stick to your acrylic block. Then you just kind of spritz it with your mini mister and stamp it down. And obviously there's black in that because there's black ink because I use black stays on ink. But if you have a clean stamp, it works better. This one I'm blue. Like I said, you just color it. Spritz it and then stamp it. So that's kind of more the effect, the watercolor effect when your stamp isn't black. But it says date. It says date, it does. And so you can stamp with them, which is really fun. Alright. Now there's two ways that you can use stencils with these. To just kind of use them like this and it gets all over the stencil but you kind of use your fingers to get it off the stencil and through into the page so even though it's not kind of going in there it will like so which I like this because it almost, almost makes it look like a block print this was done with the um, gel sticks and stencils these are Julie Belzer's um, stencils for crafters workshop and there is acrylic on here but it's also like a paint but the other thing that you can do is so you have your mini mister and you know I've got some water in here I'm gonna empty it a little bit okay mine is stained that happens okay so then what you do is you take one of these and you push it out a little bit and you actually use like um this is a palette knife let's see if I can do it this way I'm not that handed but you just shave some off the end, like so. So here's a couple flecks of green. I might need some more. Put that in there and then you shake it, shake it, shake it. Oh, oh you're just gonna be white and clean off my stencil. That's, that's fine. didn't work out so well. And it's clean. Yeah. See, now that's the that page cool. I would want to use, right? And I never clean these off. Ew. So it does this on purpose. <laughs> See? Clean me, clean me. That's cool. Yeah. I'm going to do something with that. Okay, I think we need more green in here. Oh, they didn't dissolve, that's why. <laughs> we gotta really shake it, I guess. Maybe it needs to be really hot water. <laughs> <laughs> I do. That's why editing is magic, because it makes you look better. Um, new journal. Oh, I remembered. I remembered. Okay, so. <laughs> you, should have, you should have this part where it's like, it's like, oh, it's like, oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah.